What's up guys, welcome to the Stats Free Sports channel, here to bring you a video on why I believe New York Giants will draft Spencer Rattler in this year's NFL Draft. Let's get into it guys. So, originally this video was planned to be on Bo Nix, I just really couldn't find a way to honestly fit him into the Giants plans, and I'm getting into why, but uh, the draft is coming up next week, I'm doing this video on April 19th, Friday, so as of right now, you know, uh, news has been swirling around the Giants specifically since yesterday. Uh, you know, they might trade up, they might trade down, they want McCarthy, they want to trade down with the Vikings for pick 11, pick 23, everything. Even the GMs come out saying we might trade down. I think that's going to be false. Uh, I think I think it's smoke. I really think they're going to stay put um, because the Giants have needs, you know, and one of their biggest needs is getting a top flight wide receiver. They need that, in my opinion, very, very badly. They haven't had that since OBJ. And they have a bunch of guys that are okay, that are cool. Slayton, Hyatt, you know, guys like that, but uh, Robinson. But they don't have anyone that's really a game breaker. And I think Roma Dunze at six, Malik Neighbors at six. That makes a lot of sense. Even Marvin Harrison, if he can somehow falls, to, falls there, you know, is. We don't see this possibility right now, but it's definitely possible. You know, the Cardinals and Giants, uh, the couple picks ahead, pick four and pick five. Also, pick pick three. You know, we'll see what the Patriots do. But there's a way. There, I, I do see a lane where Harrison does fall to six, and I think that would be the best case scenario for the New York Giants because they have guys like Neighbors. You know, the Neighbors is explosive. He's good. He look he looks nice, but uh, Slayton, Hyatt, those guys are kind of in the same vein. I know Neighbors is better. But they're kind of in the same vein as a uh, as a discount neighbor. So I think Harrison or Roma Dunze would probably be the best fit. But can you turn down the explosiveness of uh, neighbors? That's kind of you know that's something that, that's kind of tough to do. So we'll see what happens. But I do think that the Giants stay put on uh, whether they're at, at pick six. You know um, that's just prime position for a wide receiver one. Now. The talk about McCarthy at pick six and going to the Giants, I get it. I wouldn't be mad at it, but I think the Giants need a more day one ready quarterback right now, and that's where Bo Nix and Spencer Rattler come into the picture at. McCarthy, I believe, shouldn't see the field nowhere. Uh, or shouldn't nowhere shouldn't be nowhere near the field. I, I should say until twenty twenty five, and uh, I think. Playing with Daniel Jones as a starting quarterback, you might have to see the field sometime midseason. You know, he's a turnover turnover machine, also has been injured, two separate injuries, but has been injured the last couple of years here and there, especially last year. So it's like, you know, I, I don't know if, and they have an out after this season as well. So I don't know if you pick McCarthy, he should see the field right now. He, he needs to develop. And I think Brian Dayball is a good person to, to develop with. But at the same time, I don't think he should be in the mix of playing right now, in my personal opinion. Um, and the Giants playing behind Daniel Jones might have might make him play pretty sooner than what you would probably want. So he's not quite ready yet, in my opinion. He, he could shock me. And I have come around on, on uh, J.J. McCarthy. At first, I had him as a second-round pick. I do see the hype. I do see, I do see the potential. Um... You know, if everything pans out, I can see a, a, a world where McCarthy is the first or second best play, a uh, first or second best quarterback in this class. Uh, I do see that potential in him, but uh, I think it has to go right for him. And I think being right for him is not starting from day one. Now, on to the two veteran quarterbacks in Bo Nix and Spencer Rattler. Those two guys are some of the most experienced quarterbacks in this class. And um, as I said, this was going to be a Bo Nix video originally. The, Giant, the Giants did bring both of those guys in, Rattler and Bo Nix, uh, into the facility a couple days ago. So that's why I really uh, sparked, the, sparked something in, in, in my head. But these are something I was looking into anyways because you need someone that can push Daniel Jones right now. And I think, you know, and I want the Giants to trade back into the first round if they do stick at, at pit six. But they only have so many picks. You know, they don't have an abundance of picks. They have no, they, they don't have two picks in, in the same round. So it's kind of tough for them to 
you know, mortgage some of their future or some of their draft assets to go and, you know, trade back to trade back into the first. So they have round two, pick 47. I think that's a prime spot for Spencer Rattler. You know, I think Knicks could be gone by that time. Uh, so if the Giants do stay put, make no trades throughout this entire draft, I think pick 47 for Spencer Rattler to me makes a lot of sense. Uh, Well-experienced quarterback has, you know, I'm, I'm going to get into the scouting report in, in a few minutes, but he fits day ball perfectly. And the funny thing is, who he reminds me of is Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy kind of give you the same identical height, weight, skill set, everything. Only thing is, Spencer Rattler was highly touted coming out of uh, coming out of high school, going to OU, and obviously Brock Purdy wasn't. You know, uh, some people at some point in time back then, you know, kind of thought Rattler was a generational talent. Didn't pan out. He looked he looked kind of generational or very very good or great in 2020, but hasn't looked that good since. Uh, but he has looked solid. Has shown some ability to uh, you know be a good passer and also at the same time be a a, a good dual third option and, and run with his leg as well. He's not a he's not a mobile guy like Lamar Jackson and like that, but he can scramble, throw on the run, scramble and um, get up some yards or pick up the first down with his feet as well. You know, so I think he's a very good option for the New York Giants if they stay in pack and don't make any trades in this year's draft. But let's get into some uh, actual uh, scouting numbers. Pro, both not numbers, but scouting uh, reports about Spencer Rattler. So size is kind of tough, you know. But he's kind of Brock Purdy size, six foot two eleven. The size is kind of tough, you know. Uh, Daniel Jones, a bigger quarterback, um, you know, it's, and you can also run him more than you can Rattler. Rattler, you can't run as much, and no. Dayball does like that's why I like Bo Nix a little bit more than Spencer Rattler, because you know Josh Allen can, can run and take a pound, and Daniel Jones, in theory, body size structure can take a pound. He did in 2022, he ran a lot, uh, got pounded a lot, but took the brunt of the force and played pretty well. Rattler cannot do that. Bo Nix may can do that more often than than Rattler can, but I wouldn't want Rattler doing that at all. You know, so that's something there. The frame, the size, uh, he's a smaller quarterback. So other than that, though, um, I like everything about him. You know, dual threat, guys, I said, smooth. And he's a modern-day NFL quarterback. Small, compact, can give you run, can give you good arm talent, great short thrower, great middle-of-the-field thrower, and medium-level thrower. The deep ball is, is cool, but not great. But uh, that's something that... You know, if you get a Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, pair with those guys you already have, and then you have Spencer Rattler as well, I think he could take this team and take them to another level where Jones' arm is still lacking at after all these years there. You know, so um, I think Rattler could be great there. Another thing, as far as his accuracy goes, as I said, short throw accuracy is great. Uh, middle to field throw accuracy, the medium level is, is accuracy. Ball placement is a strength of Rattler's natural instinct to make plays when forced to improvise. As I said earlier, throwing on the run, scrambling, uh, off-kilter plays. You know, he does get a little, a, a weakness of his, he does throw the back foot when, when pressure a lot. You know, that's something that he'll work on on, on that part. But on the opposite end of that, he can, you know, uh, if he can beat the blitz and see the blitz coming, and you know, he can definitely get away from it and make some moves and, uh, and it won't put it don't he doesn't really put the ball in harm's way too often as he used to. Still does a little bit, get a little reckless with it, but um normally if he can see the blitz coming and beat the blitz, he can throw on the run and, and, and beat and beat the team downfield and you know make some good plays. He's not killing Williams with it. You no, know, uh, he he's one to one in this class and probably in, in the whole college football, but he's definitely pretty good at doing it. And uh, I think you know the Giants O line has been has been okay, not not good as of late. You know, some people say they could they could go lineman at pit six. I'm not mad at it, but at the same time, you you need the receiver help in my opinion badly, and you need a top flight wide receiver. No more average middle to other field guys. You need someone who can get the ball. You know, uh, right there to it. You know, I think. Having a quarterback in round two, 
going receiver, a top flight receiver in round one and pick six, to me makes the most sense. But O line is still a need you can address later. Um, also, I think Rattler is a natural athlete. You know, light footed mobility. Uh, he seamlessly eludes defenders in the pocket. As I said, if he can see the blitz coming, he can definitely beat you. If he doesn't, or he feel you no know, pressure come right up the middle. Then he, you know, kind of footwork is a little sloppy, throws off the back foot, stuff like that. So that has to be worked on, but that happens. And, um, you know, that's really it. The me- me- mechanical in- inconsistencies and stuff like that, the uh, the structure of his technique when he's dropping back and stuff like that, that was more concerned years ago. You know, uh, will he revert back in the NFL under pressure? Maybe, you know, stuff like that, but... As on a down and down basis, on an average down and down basis, when you know you can't really call for the blitz, it's just you know first and ten or something. The blitz probably won't be coming. I'll be fine with Spencer Rattler, you know, no concern there. But under pressure, part is the only really major concern I have for Rattler. Can he deal with that? And I think he can. You know, Brian Dayball uh, is known for his QB whispering. You know, he wanna he he was the golden boy a couple years ago prior to last year. You know, where that. Giants had a terrible season, but prior to that, with Josh Allen and also his first year with the Giants as the head coach, he was the golden boy as far as quarterback whispers goes. You know, he helped fix James Jones for a season. He helped fix Josh Allen along with Stephon Diggs. So, you know, I think bringing a guy like Spencer Rattler or Bo Nix and having him push Jones right away, I think, you know, uh, could definitely be a good look for the Giants and also Help them make the decision to get off of the Daniel Jones sorry contract. They shouldn't have paid them in, in the first place.